Welcome back, and today we're going to talk about meditation for the active mind. I remember when I first heard the word meditation, all I thought of was um, um, and I was like, that looks god awful stupid boring how do you sit still oh that's for the weirdos that's for the yogi people and here i am now every single day i wake up i make my cup of cacao i go up to the beach and i'm sitting there with my hands on my knees <laughs> but that's not exactly how it went from zero to this and that's not actually what goes down when I meditate. So if you're somebody that also thinks that meditation is boring, stupid, impossible, because you have to sit still the whole time, well, I have got some reality checking news for you. My meditation actually looks like a triathlon and it is a beautiful process that changes every day. And instead of feeling empty, like, oh, meditate means empty your thoughts and be nothing and be still. I actually feel incredibly fulfilled and wholesome during and after my meditation. So what is this meditation thing and how can you meditate without sitting still and being home? Because my body usually starts to hurt or it has a lot of energy, it needs to get it out. Well, then we move our body. Our meditation is something that we do for ourselves, not for this perfect picture of this. At some point it may get to that and that may be your meditation that may feel great for you but if you're someone like me who's incredibly active and has a mind that is incredibly active and never stops well let's honor that it's a beautiful thing that we have a mind that keeps working thank goodness we have a mind that keeps working but where we put that attention and how we coordinate the different aspects of the brain to take in the information of the mind of the um, universal consciousness well now that is a beautiful art and science. So when we think of, oh my gosh, my mind is just racing, I can't sit in meditation and all my thoughts and my to-do list and those conversations I need to have and the conversations I wanna have and all of that gets fuddled in our brain and now we're just angry and even worse off than we started, <sighs> drop into the body. Movement requires our mind to pay attention to our body depending how we do it. We can unconsciously move. We can probably drive from point A to point B at this point without thinking about it. You're like, how did I get here? Because it's on automatic pilot. It's in that subconscious um, portion of your brain. But when we bring the subconscious to the conscious, now it's active and where we bring our attention, where we bring our focus, that's where our energy is gonna go. And so now if I'm bringing my attention and awareness to my physical body, that's where my mind is going to go. And now those extraneous thoughts and um, have to do's and all that, they kind of get put back on the back burner. They're not necessarily gone forever. You'll remember them very quickly. But right now you are brought into the present moment because you're focusing on your body. So meditation for me is riding up to the beach, going for a two mile walk and going for a 20 minute swim. Now you're like, how is that a meditation? Well, I did not turn my phone on. My brain is absolutely in an alpha theta brainwave state and I feel wholesome after I have clarity in my thoughts I have more energy and I am in a much better mood than I was before my meditation and again this is my routine right now because it's summer so I'm able to hop on a bike go up to the beach, go for my swim and my walk and all of these things. And it's gonna change over time what that meditation is for you. But what is the common denominator of this meditation? Movement, I'm moving my body. And then I can sit down because my body's kind of tired and all the stress and trauma that's built up in my body is at peace. And so now this inner guidance, this um, wisdom coming from my heart and coming from a deeper place is able to speak and be present freely instead of my mind with all of my shoulds and coulds and would haves and have to do's taking over. So if you have a very active mind and meditation is intriguing to you, but you thought you just had to sit there, well, do you feel a little more liberated? The fact that, oh my gosh, wait, my morning walk can be my meditation? Yeah. When you connect your breath to your body, you are bringing the awareness inward. 
And when our mind and our body are working as one, when we have this head heart coherence, we feel calmer, less stressed, more in control, and more ourselves. So just try this for me. Inhale and reach your arms up over your head. And exhale and reach your arms back down. Now I want you to coordinate and time it. So every time you inhale, the length of your inhale is going to be the length of time it takes for you to reach your arms up overhead and then touch your fingers together. And then exhale, bring your arms back down by your side. And now to make it even more interesting, feel the sensation of pushing the air away with the top of your hands as you inhale and reach those arms all the way up. And exhale, feel like you're pressing air down with your hands. And that exhale is as long as it takes for your hands to touch down by your sides again. Now, even just doing that a few times, your mind chatter was put on the back burner, yeah? Now imagine if you did this for 20 minutes, whether it's walking and paying attention to the breath with the arm swing, or swimming, you actually have to concentrate on the breath. Maybe you're taking three strokes and then coming up for a breath of air, or you're consciously aware of the water holding you up and you moving your body like a fish. I like to think when I'm swimming that my hips are the, the motor and my hips are what's actually moving me through the water, just like a fish does, because they don't have long arms necessarily, right? So it's more of this body motion. And you're also doing this to your spine. You're allowing some movement to happen. It's very, very good for you. Obviously we know here swimming's excellent for you, but no, it like actually is if you have any tight muscles. This is lubricating your joints. It's moving the muscles and tendons with the support of the water. That is incredibly meditative when you bring your awareness to these motions. Again, repetition is very soothing. Do you ever just stare out? Do you ever get the staries, right? When you're tired, or we say it to little kids, they've got the staries. But it's just because you're gazing at one point, one focus, and it's incredibly soothing. That's a form of meditation as well. And so when you can actively move your body in this sway, in this rock, why is a waltz so beautiful? One, two, three, one, two, three. It rocks you like a baby. And when we feel like we're being rocked like a baby in support, our nervous system calms, our amygdala, which is our fear center and alert center in our brain, says, okay, we can calm down so our hippocampus, our memory center, our hippocampus can rise in activity. We can become more creative. We can feel more joy and we're just being in the present moment. That is meditation. So think about your day. When would be a good time for you to meditate? Well, any time is, but I know that doesn't work for me. When my day is going and it's the middle of the afternoon, I'm not about to be like, okay, time to meditate. It would be nice, but honestly, that doesn't work for me. I prefer to meditate first thing in the morning. When we're sleeping, our brain waves are constantly changing. And just before we awake, we are in a hypnotic, like a theta brainwave state, right? And then we wake up and we become slightly aware and now we're in alpha state and then we start doing our day and now we're in beta. But that meditative state, that sweet spot, when you're like half asleep, half awake, that is a cheat code to getting into your meditation because you're already basically there. So when you get up out of bed, don't turn your phone on, don't check your social media, get up out of bed and get outside and start moving your body. Pay attention to your breath, coordinate the breath and the arms or coordinate the breath and the head, pick a body part, it doesn't really matter. Because you don't have to bring yourself all the way down from a high beta brainwave state from the middle of the day, you're already there. Utilize that skill that you have and your body will get quicker into dropping into this state at different times a day. But while you're still learning and while you're boosting your ability to drop into this meditative state, make it easy for yourself. Now, if you're someone who likes to meditate at night, same thing, your body and brain are on their way down from the day. Dim the lights, turn off your phone. Did I say turn off your phone? Oh, one really important thing, turn off your phone or put it on silent so that you're on your way down into this alpha theta brainwave state. And again, then maybe you can drop into your meditation just before you fall asleep and then have a wonderful 
night's sleep. And it doesn't mean lie in bed. Bed is for sleeping and some other things. But move out of your bed, sit on your floor. I have to do that a lot of times. My body and mind are still going, so I have to sit on my floor and just roll through my spine a bunch of times. You can even just cat and cow. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Or roll on the floor, I don't really care. But it's getting you back into your body, decreasing all of the external noise around you, and slowly and surely, you will come back to yourself. So give these a try, and if you have any questions, Feel free to reach out, make some comments and see how any of this works for you. See if you have more um, ideas of what may be a good idea for your meditation without just sitting still, or maybe these different things will lead you into being able to sit still and that feels good for you. And that's awesome too.